Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of West Ham Fan TV on the social, our interactive social media show where we answer questions sent in by you. I've got Scott with me today. Hello everyone. Good to have you back mate. Yeah, cheers mate. Yeah. Yeah. Been a long time. Yeah, hasn't it? Yeah. It feels like it's been months. I know we haven't been doing this for months, but... It's been weeks. Weeks, yeah. yeah. It feels like months. Yeah. 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 Right, we'll dive straight in, yeah? Yeah mate. Yeah. Okay, first couple of questions here. Um, got one from Kevin Day. It says, now we're on a mission to get to Wembley, do you think we should start playing the likes of Oxford and Cullen in a few league games? I ask this as a few of our players are starting to look tired. I do agree some of our players are starting yeah. to look tired, but um, it's like we, I said on the previous post-match point, you know, I think that we still need to concentrate on league form, yeah. because one little mistake or one little slip up yeah, you know, could cost us. Both. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and that's that's how you got to. I think they've, they've got to approach it. Cullen obviously's gone out because he was probably sent in before. He's now gone out mm. on loan to Bradford. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like to see a couple of youngsters get a bit yeah. more game time. I, I mean, we know. I mean, I know the Arsenal game and um, Oxford was was brilliant. Mm. Um, not not so great in the Leicester game. No, he just didn't have a bad game, but. No. Um, we know he's, he's got the ability to yeah. to play yeah. in those sorts of games. So I'd say, mate, mate, Oxford. I mean, he's been in a few of the squads yeah. lately as yeah. well. He's been on the bench. But so. as well, I don't think West Ham's been in the situation in games for him to get a run out. Yeah, yeah, we've not we've not been too comfortable in a no, game or no. you know. So, That's it. but um, no, definitely um, Oxford. I'd like to see yeah, get a bit, get a bit more, more yeah. bit more game time, especially for me first, playing centre half where he should be playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> I hope that answers your question, Kim. Mm -hmm. So, next one's from Bradley Flack. <clears throat> yep. It says, going back to Nicky's rant about Moses, who do you feel was the most arrogant player and who is the most generous? That's a tough I think one. this is like past and present as well. Don't think like just the current squad. I'm trying to think, really. Um, <laughs> that, that, do you know what? That's an hard question to answer. It is, yeah. Because we don't know who's generous. Mm. You know, and I don't. Carl, Carl, and Carl was. Carl and Carl. Carl and Carl. I'm going to go. Carl and Carl generous. Yeah. Arrogant. Because I know, I know, I know. Carl and Carl had, you know, had his critics as a, mm. as a footballer, but I, I love Carl and Carl. I think he's he brilliant for us. For me, arrogance got to be Tanya. Yeah, but that was arrogant had, in a good he way. Because he had that arrogance that he was that good. Yeah, but that was arrogant was in a good way. I think he means arrogant, as in you know, uh, uh, Nicky had said about the. At the Newcastle game, with the autograph situation, I think I think it means like that. Not not as in a. I mean, De Canio was arrogant in a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's arrogant <coughs> in a good way. I, I really don't know. Really, really don't know. I couldn't pick someone. Couldn't pick someone. Sorry, I can't. Yeah, I can't it's a tough that one. one. I can't. Yeah. I'll tell you. Most generous say Colton Cole. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I say like he just. He only set up a. Foundation, I think it was, or a charity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd, he'd give a lot of his you know, time. When and that, you so. said Moses is arrogant. The Kenio was arrogant in his own special way. Yeah, yeah. that's that's for me. That's that's the suit. Yeah, but arrogant in a good way. Yeah, arrogant yeah. in a good not way. Moses, but no, nah. nah. <laughs> he did have a good game. Yeah, 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 yeah. He did. He did. All right. Then. Most time we got some in the uh, the comments section from last week. <coughs> this one's from 19 Snarf 66. Snarf. <laughs> that's, that's a great name. <laughs> says, um, what do you think of Valencia up front on his own? For me, he's not a striker. One of the worst touches in the Premier League, and seems to have no balance or upper body strength. I think he could work as a poacher, but not on his own. He needs someone with him. Do you think he's proved himself since joining? I totally agree with everything he's just said there. Terrible yeah, touch. He can't play up down. top on his own. For me, <clears throat> look back as Valencia as a whole, mm. right? And apart from that goal against Hull, mm. what has he done? Yeah, all right. He got a couple of goals. He goes on this little run. He got he got four goals in three games, I think it was. Yeah. But overall, for me, he don't bring a lot to the side. And he <clears throat> and I. I have, no disrespect to him. Yeah, but playing that single forward, 
he's no good for me. Yeah, yeah. Playing when he was up top with Sacco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was completely Someone different. Someone shared a But yeah. But that's as I said, for me, he's still got a lot to prove. His touch is awful. Oh, I'm always saying, like, for yeah. professional footballer, yeah, his touch is. And he's, well, not only professional football, he's an international. Exactly, exactly. He's, uh, but he's, I, I think still, he's, people will slate me for this, but I still think he's got a lot to prove at West Ham, and I can see him mm. gone in the summer. Yeah, you, you've said that mm. in the past, haven't you? Yeah. So. Right, here we go. It says, uh, this one's from Craig Atkinson. If West Ham were to play at an away ground in Scotland, where would it be? And what was the dullest season you've had at Upton Park? Mine's the 2012-13 season. Major part of the problem was the manky kits. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. See, this goes back to remember when we said last week mm. about your your clubs from other countries. I know, yeah. I know, Scotland's it is another country, but it's not like Italy or France. You know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I said I always had a soft spot for Aberdeen. So for me, I'd like I'd like to go and play at Aberdeen. Fair enough for me. You know, it's um, it's hard. I don't know much about the Scottish game. I don't, you know. For me, West Ham's got to be in the biggest stadium in Scotland. So I don't, who, who's there? It's um, is it Queen of the South? Hey, but they, do they still play at Hamden? I'm sure they do. Did it's they? got to be Hamden. Yep, yeah, it's yeah. got to be Hamden for me. Cause <laughs> only because I don't know much else about Scottish football. So I do apologise. And um, what was the Dallas season you've had at Upton Park? Oh God. Um, I think it's got to be for me the season before last, I think. Some of the games were just awful. I don't know, the end awful. of last season was awful. Yeah. Um, probably one of the renegation battle years under Redknapp. I can't remember the exact years, but. Yeah, but that I, was I wouldn't quite say they were dull. We were, uh, yeah, they, they, some of them still were. exciting games. But no, I'm going to say the second half of last season was the worst. Football I've ever seen at Upton Park. I'd say in the season before as well. I think there was, there was some, yeah. some pretty poor, poor football. <clears throat> Always one, yeah. Go on. It's Daddy Kush LDN TV. Ginger Pele or Dimi Pele, and do you think Antonio has a chance of making the Euros? So the first bit first, Ginger Pele or Dimi Pele? Ginger Pele. Ginger, I don't know if. As a, an ex defender, yeah, same. It's but got to be. It's not only that. <coughs> Payet has come in with. He's doing what we signed him for. Yeah. Ginger start of the season, fourth choice centre back, mm. stepped up to the plate. So for me, it's I know I've always been a fan. I mean, when we sold him the first time. Oh yeah. Like when, when he was at the club the first time, I was gutted. Yeah. When yeah, we got rid of him, so I've, I've always yeah. been a big fan of Ginge. Yeah, so yeah, he's, he's doing well. He's, he's doing uh, well. He's great. What was so. it? Antonio at Euros. I think um, he's got a chance. He's, he's got a chance. I think it might just be a little too soon. I would say Antonio, if he can get the rest of the season out of the way, playing regularly, mm. he's got to look for after the Euros. I think you're right in what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, I, I think it might I think just be. Any other manager apart from Uncle Roy, or yeah. Granddad Roy, whatever you want to call him, you know, he'd have a chance. Mm. But I think Roy knows his squad for the Euros. Yeah. And I think barring, you know, someone playing out of their skin or an injury, mm. no one's going to get into that squad. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, think, I think he's got to look for after that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think if he keeps progressing the way he is, mm. then yeah, I think after the Euros he might be able to. Yeah, yeah I think the Euros have come a bit too early for yeah, him. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. I mean, you think he's, he's, he's only had a run of what, seven, eight games? He's played every game though since yeah. he's got into the side, so you've got to give him that. Yeah. Right. Next one, oh, I didn't have it here a minute ago. Where's it gone? It's from Graham Morris. What's your favourite music band of all time? Tough one for me because there's two, yeah, so I'm right. going to say I'm both Lincoln Park and the Foo Fighters. Mm. I'm going to say Stereophonics. Mm -hmm. Do like Stereophonics, but seeing as I'm a bit older than you, lot, <laughs> um, I did you know like the, the Jam, oh yeah, and the Clash no, and yeah, bands like right. that. So listen, I know I know the music and then that day, but yeah, yeah. So that that bit with Stereophonics and. So the, the jam, but now oh, I see I like the Who as well. See, oh, that's, that's a tough. It's one. a tough question, but that's, that's, that's why one. I go. It's you good know. question, though. Yes, very good question. question. All right, we'll move on to Twitter. Mm -hmm. The Twitter questions. Uh, just Thank double you. check. There's no more. Sorry, break that a minute. You got more Facebook here. You got all them, haven't you? 
Yeah. Well, you want you want to do that first or yeah. do Twitter first? Uh, do Twitter first. Quite in. You cut that, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> More work for Dan. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> I'm gonna go all tweets. Oh, you're on all tweets. Yeah. Yeah. Go on in. Sorry. Right. Yeah. So I know. Oh, mate. Right. Sorry. I know. Mate. Sorry. You <laughs> Right, here we go then. This is a good one. All right, it's from Joseph Rain, 94. Mm-hmm. How's your mental stability after the 2006 Cup final in Cardiff? It's the most emotional I've ever been at a football match. Yeah. It was, you know, I've, I've managed Cup final wins, Cup final losses, mm. things like that, you know, but... No, it's probably the closest I've ever come to crying watching a game of football. I, I have to admit, I was uh, when the, the I, I watched most of the penalty shootout through the window in the, the car park at the pub. Um, was it the, the Cooper's Arms? Mm. Tell me she wouldn't get a ticket for the final. Um, she was watching it down there, and uh, I say as soon as the um, the final penalty went in, um, we then proceeded to get quite drunk. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. So my emotional stability was I yeah. was very drunk that night. <laughs> um, but also proud. Yeah, I was proud, I was proud of the same done, performance yeah, they put in, it. like we were the better side. But and I still can't watch it. I've never, I've never, I've never it watched since. it again. Nope. Never watched it nope. again. So yeah, I was a bit um even still. Yeah. Even now, it's still a bit raw. Move on from that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm welling up now. <laughs> right, this one's from Leon Flannery. Yep. Does anyone know where we will find Ridman on match days next season? I um, know he's trying to work he's, something out. He is trying out, to sort of something out. We're not too sure. Um, yeah, he, I think I'm he's sure trying to work something with the club, isn't he? Yeah, so I'm sure once he sorts it out, he'll put something out on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll tweet um, it out. Obviously, if you're not on, well, obviously the person that's asked that on Twitter, so you'll be able to mm. find out. But if not, then I'm sure we'll um, we'll have some information yeah, once, to start the next season. Yeah, once so, we know, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll yeah. let you know. So, right. Next one's from Jake Penn. <clears throat> sort of covers the Antonio bit mm-hmm. question a little bit it says do you think Noble, Cresswell and Antonio should get a call up for England I say Antonio we've already said about Antonio soon. yeah uh, Cresswell I don't see why not no you know I can't I don't see many better left backs in the Premiership than Cresswell no and the guy seems the guy's got an engine on him they just don't stop that it? 120 minutes he was Liverpool, bombing up and down yeah, he didn't look time. tired really? and for me <laughs> this type of player England needs a couple of times he gets caught out with more physical wingers. Yeah. But I, I think he does. And we said on the last well, post match we point. Noble, we? Yeah, you know. No, I'm not the biggest Noble fan. I think everyone who watches our channel knows that. I, I like Noble, but I think there's better players. Mm. But stats don't lie. And the goal he scored against um, Norwich, the assists he puts in this season, mm. he deserves it. And, you know, again, going back to the last post-match point, players like Fabian Delph, yeah. what does he do? I think a lot of it's the club he played for, exactly. simple yeah, as that. But yeah. he, he played for Villa, and all right, he was a good player in a very poor Villa side, but what does he do? You know, yeah. why, why is it that he gets in there, but Noble, with the stats that Noble's got, and things like that, he don't even get a sniff? Yeah, but the thing is, you've got players in there who aren't regulars for their clubs. Because of the club they play for, uh, yeah. I like you, you, you Man United. Yeah, you know, we, you so know like they're getting in the side purely. Yeah. I, I personally, I think. I mean, some people might go, "Oh, it's, it's just a conspiracy theory from you," but but that, but that's but that's it. Look, I love I love England. I want England to win the Euros. Mm. I don't think they will, but I want no, them to. No. And you know, don't get me wrong, England. You got West Ham and you got England. You know, West Ham are the main thing, then England. Yeah. But I just can't stand players not being given a chance. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's for me. Noble deserves a chance. Do you know what? I'd, I hate to say, I just think, unfortunately, with Noble, if he hasn't been called up by now, no, at think, this stage of his yeah, career, I don't exactly, think. Exactly. He we, will. I think we've got a couple of friendlies coming up. If he don't get called up, then yeah. no chance. Because what? A friendly? What? Got to lose by exactly by picking him. So. Exactly. Yeah, we'll move on from that one. Mm-hmm. That one's upset me as well. <laughs> <laughs> right, this one's from uh, Gavin O'Flynn. Is it at Gavlar? Gavlar. <laughs> Gavlar. Gavlar. <laughs> uh, if a Chelsea or Man City type person was to take over the club, could they buy the Olympic Stadium from the LLDC? I know we talked about this. Yeah. Before, not on the show, but we no. discussed it. 
from the understanding we've got at a minute, it's a no. Yeah. I don't think they can. I think it has to be so many other events there yeah, a year yeah. other than um, football. But to be honest, in a ten years down the line, the way this country's going, I think they'll be crying out for someone to buy it yeah, and give yeah. the taxpayer back a bit of money. Yeah. You know, but no, from from what we understand, they can't. It can't be sold. It's got to be owned. But yeah, and have to have so many athletics events there. So yeah. Many. But I think I think it can be changed. Uh, for me, uh, as I said, ten years down the line. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, yeah, it'll be it'll mate. be sold. The, the events will still go there. That'll probably be one of the things that they put in. That yeah, you can buy the stadium, but the athletics have still got to be there. You've got to have different events there, community things there. You know, mm. but. I, I can't see it. I can't, to yeah. be fair, I can't see West Ham being sold. So, nah, nah, nah. Maybe may like a. Um, There'll be an like investment a, from an investor yeah. who might yeah. hold a, yeah. a majority. Or <clears throat> all right, this one's from Tattoo Joshua. There's about four A's here. <laughs> so, if you could select any ex West Ham player in their prime to slot into our current squad, dead or alive, who would it be? Cool. Cool. We had some great players down there. That's hard. Yeah. That is a tough one. I'm going to do a Ryan here and say we could do that on another <laughs> show. Because that's a very tough question. That is a a tough question. Because, I mean, obviously, you've got like Decanio, Bobby Moore, Billy Bonds, Billy Trevor Bonds, Brooklyn, Trevor Alan Brooklyn. Devonshire, yeah. Tony Cotty, Frank McAvenny. Yeah. We just go on. <laughs> exactly. That's what I mean. And, you know, so. and then you look at. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many other players. Yeah, I think we should. I, I reckon, Mum, we should do a special, like something like that. Yeah. You know, you, you, the the best, like from your best the, the, all the history time. of the club. Yeah. I think we're we're gonna we're gonna do that. I yeah, think. I think so. I yeah. think because that's what I'd like to. Yeah, like it'd be, do, it'd but, be, it'd but be have a everyone do it because I want to see everyone's. Yeah, yeah. So like have all of us on there. Yeah, but uh, uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna answer it. <laughs> For me personally, it'd be Bobby Moore. Yeah. Just because I never got to see him play. Yeah. Yeah, well, can you imagine Jeff first up front? The amount of goals we'd get. Let's, let's be honest. Oh, I, know, I know probably no one, not many people alive would have saw it, but our all time top goal scorer. Yeah. We're the top goal scorer for Nank, you know, yeah. Vic Watson. So, yeah. but yeah, I'm going to say more because I never had the privilege of seeing the guy play. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm going to. Yeah, I'll put. Yeah, I'll say I've, 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 that's one of my regrets. Never got to see. Mm. Right. Yeah, Bobby Moore. So that's, that's that what play, I'm going so, so yeah, but we. I think we're gonna. We're yeah, gonna we'll come back that, and do it. Yeah, I think we're so. We'll we are gonna do a, Do another show for that one. one. That's, that's a good question. That. Right, this one's from U E A. Um, how sad are you to see Upton Park get knocked down at the end of 2016? Very sad. Yeah, I'm very sad to be leaving it mm. and and seeing it go, but I, I'm. I'm I'm quite pro moving to the Olympic Stadium. Yeah, you know, it's, I it's, wasn't, but it's going to happen. So you it's, it's, it. it's the next. It's the next step. Mm. You know, I know. I know why we've got to do it. Yeah, there's a lot. You know, my first game watching West Ham was at the bowling ground. Mm. I got a lot of good memories there. I've got a lot yeah. of bad memories seeing some of the performances we put in. Yeah. But I've got so many good memories, and it will be sad to see it go. But. I'm really excited the direction yeah, it's, it's, we're in. It's in. exciting so, times. Uh, I'm not coming. happy that we're leaving. I'm not happy that it's going, but I'm happy in the way West Ham's going. Yeah. But then saying that, you know, 100 odd years ago, our great granddad was probably moaning about leaving the memorial ground exactly. down at the bowling. Yeah, so, that's it. Yeah, and it, that, it, that it works out in, pretty well. It will be a shame to see it go. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be an emotional last it game. Will, yeah, the, the last game will, yeah. be, will be very emotional, I think. <clears throat> All right, next one's from DH. Would you swap a 28-year-old Decanio for pay it right now? Oh, blimey. Oh. Can we have them both in the same side? <laughs> That'd be some team, wouldn't it? Mm. I'm going to say, yeah, I'll have Decanio. 28-year-old Decanio over pay it. Yeah? Yeah. I think so. Ooh. Get you more goals. Tough, 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 tough. tough, tough. tough. Um, I'm going to say, yeah. I'm going to say, just bounce it out. <laughs> I'm going to say, play it. Because he said, oh, mate. Yeah, that is a, a tough one. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'm going to say, play it. Right, this one's from Amish Chat. Good old Amish Chat. So, 
it says, hard one for you. Would you have Josh Cullen today or the same age, fit Jack Collison? It's a tricky question because we haven't really seen much of Josh Cullen. I've heard raving reports about the kid and um, <laughs> probably if that question come up after I've got to see how he performs for Bradford and yeah. he's gone there on loan, it might be a bit easier. I'd say, um, at a minute, I'd say I'll, keep, I'll take Jack Collinson. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, a fit Jack Collinson, you know what you were getting and we know we. it's a bit an unfair question, but it's a good question, it but is a bit good. unfair. But yeah, I'll take a fit, same age Jack Collinson yeah. at a minute. But that's because I've not seen much. Jack and we know Collins. what fit Jack Collison yeah, could do. That's it. But I've got high hopes for Cullen. Really have. Yeah, I, I think he's doing pretty well. I've got a mate who's a Bradford fan. Um, saying good things about him. Mm. Oh, he's been doing well. So, right, I've got one here from Slav. Right, Slav. Right, Slav. <coughs> it says, how do, you, <laughs> "How do you punish Scott for not sending priority forms for Norwich away?" <laughs> We'll leave that down to Ryan. <laughs> I reckon. Although I think there's, there's a big fish coming for Ryan to slap me with. Yeah, I'll probably get the you, you, you tail should, end you of that get one. The fish I, yeah. as well, I think. <clears throat> uh, right, this one's from Lewis Tucker. Mm -hmm. If you go back in time to any West Ham moment or game at the bowling ground, what would it be and when? For me, because I didn't have a season ticket around the playoff times and things like that and heard about that it was the um, being 2-0 down to Man United Rada Choi who steps off oh, the bench yeah. pulls one back and Dixie smashes in the equaliser from the penalty spot yeah. for me that was the best atmosphere I experienced when I had my season tickets mm. back then in the Bobby Moore lower you know that, that was that, that night was brilliant for me Yeah. so yeah I'll go back then yeah. well, I'm going to give a weird one a bit of time travel involved there I, was I don't expect I, anything different. It was before you, I was bowling. My, my dad was at the game and he told me about it. It was the um, Cupman's Cup semi final, second leg, mm. 1976 against Eintracht Frankfurt. And my dad said the ground was absolutely rocking that night. And he said and the game itself was one, you know, one of the best games he's seen at mm. Hudson Park. So it'd be that one for me. Uh, one from Silver Lake Hammers. Thoughts on the new badge? I prefer the old one, to be honest. Yeah. I get what they're doing with the new badge and the the, the um you know the the way it's gonna be labelled in the club and marketing mm. the club. I get why they're doing it, yeah. but I prefer the castle with the hammers to be honest. Yeah, I'm uh I'm but then saying that though, the, the the older older badges like from the fifth just had the Amherst, yeah. didn't it? So. Yeah, we just, yeah, but that's it. I like, I like the badge with the castle, so yeah. that's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah. All right, from Tim Hunt. After the last home game at the bowling, what personal piece of memorabilia would you take from the ground? Pay it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a tough one. I like the dugout chairs. Yeah, I like them. I wouldn't mind the yeah. dugout chair. I do look a bit. Yeah, they look a bit comfy, don't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't have a dugout. Have that in your front room while <laughs> yeah. playing your PS4. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That. That's what I take, dugout chair. Yeah, I'd. Um... Actually, no, sorry. The West Ham crest in the tunnel. That's a big thing to take home. <laughs> Still, it's a massive thing. That's, that's the home. one thing. If I, I want that. Oh, I want do, that. You want, do you remember when we played uh, the bowling? Yeah. Those baths. The baths. Yeah, I think they're gone. The, they're gone I don't there. know, they're still there. I don't, I don't if they're still there, okay, that was a nice bath there. I'm yeah, having that. Yeah. I'm having that. <laughs> <laughs> right, this one's from. There's two questions here from WHU Religion. First one says, I know it's France and we don't really care about them and what they do, but is it ridiculous that Payet isn't in their squad? Totally. Yeah, it totally. Is, yeah. I can't understand how they pick a bite over him, but. But then they, they've always done it like back in the 90s, mm. Cantona never got in the. No, exactly. In the exactly. France squad and uh, Ginola. No. He, he never got many. It's mad that they don't pick yeah, him. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, I, I think he, I think he's ridiculous, you know, when he, how he's been playing for us this year, but, you know, we don't pick the French team. And, no. That's it, you know. And long may continue yeah. not getting in it. Yeah. So I need to just keep doing the business for us. Then. Exactly. Next one is, when Lanzini is back, where would you play Payet and Lanzini? Who would play on the left and in the middle? I think Lanzini's uh, when when they have been in the same. Lanzini's been out wide, hasn't he? I keep swapping around. For me, Lanzini Lanzini works a lot more than Payet defensively. Mm. Um, 
but yeah, I'd keep swapping them. You know, I'd start yeah. with Lanzini, why I'd play it behind, but yeah, but you just know, get them to move. Uh, yeah, 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 get them. Get I mean, uh, at um, at Anfield this year, like when, when Lanzini, yeah. a lot of his dangerous runs was up the From, middle. Yeah, straight exactly. up the middle. So you know, just, just chop and change. I'd say, so, but I'd, I'd probably start Lanzini wide, mm. play it middle. But like you say, get him to. Well, because I mean, play it. He, know, he tends to drift out wide yeah, anyway, so yeah. then Lanzini so that's it. Can, so just get him to swap can drop back I in. So be regulars for the West Ham first team in the future, and he will not get a regular spot in the first team. I can see all of them breaking in, to be yeah. honest. I mean, having seen Samuelson the other night, he was a uh, torment in West Brom, wasn't he? Samuelson, Samuelson reminded me of Morrison. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, the, the ball sticks to his feet. He's a, he's a very good young player. Mm. You know, and he's, he's, West Ham need to keep him. Yeah. Um, Burke... I think proved last season that he can cut it. Mm. Um, he's playing well, Bradford. Bradford are raving about him, and I see him as a replacement for Collins mm. in two years' time. Oxford, so long as he keeps progressing, I think he needs to go out on loan and get some games. I get that he's yeah. young, but he needs to go out and get some games behind him. And you know, don't let, don't listen to the hype around him. Yeah. You know, for me, he let that performance against Arsenal go to his head, and Leicester he got Leicester. found out. And he, he yeah, just, you know, and I think West Ham have managed him right. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, I, I think maybe um, some loan time mm. might be yeah, But yeah, I, I can definitely. see all three of those, yeah. all three of those getting in. <clears throat> all right, this one's from Liam Charles Giacometti. Have you heard of a player called Christian Tello? He's a winger on loan to Fiorentina from Barca. So do you think he, we should sign him instead of Moses? He's quick, got a decent pass, excellent dribbling and a really good shot. Can play either wing and striker. 23 and for only around 9 million. I think he's perfect for us. I've got to admit, I don't know yeah, I don't anything know about, him, about him. But if what you've said there is true. The, the worrying thing for me is in players in the Italian league, they don't always cut it when they come to the Premiership. You look yeah, at, um, it's a different style it of football, Salah, isn't it? Salah, who played for Chelsea. Mm. Was um, ripping the Italian leagues to shreds. Come over here, done absolutely nothing. Yeah. Gone back to Fiorentina, he's ripping it to shreds again. Yeah, so it's, it, it's just how he can because it's a lot more sort of physical. Yeah, it's sort a, of it's game a different here, place. Yeah. But for nine million, if he is if he good, if he is that good, then it's a bit of a steal. The yeah. way he's described him, I'll sign him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just what like Graham Soonis did with. Uh, yeah, exactly. George Wayne's <laughs> <George> cousin. <Wayne's> cousin. <laughs> Right, this one's from Gary Dolan. This probably one for me. Yeah, I think so, mate. All right, just wondering, how did you rate Liam Brady back in the day? He was definitely my idol growing up as an Irish hammer. Did you know our top scorer of all time in the history of our club is Frank O'Farrell? I remember you give Joe O'Brien a break. He must be ready to top himself at this stage, lol. Right, Joe, but I like Joe O'Brien. I like Joe. I like Joe. I know. I know we. Yeah, we just we're, 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 we're just messing about. Yeah. Joe O'Brien's never, no. never let let the side no, down. Exactly. He's, well, uh, he has. When he took out Winston Reid once, and I think Southampton scored, so he has let the side down. But I thought it was Everton, wasn't it? Cup game. Yeah, it was Everton Cup game. That was it. Yeah. Took it but a but no, yeah. I like Joe O'Brien. Yeah. He's, a, you know, when he comes in, he, he never. He I never. still love it. I think in the European game where he beat a player and the geezer took him out, and he was so disappointed because he just <laughs> had a bit of skill, got round yeah. the guy, and he's he on like, the floor like that when he can. The glory. Yeah. But the question about Liam Brady, um, I. I Saw him play for us um, a few times in the old second division. It was about 89, 88, 89, uh, sorry, 89, 90, mm -hmm. 1991. And he was sort of coming to the very end of his career. But he was still one of the best players on mm. the pitch. You know, he, he, he just seemed to have so much time with the ball. And he, I mean, they called him Chip, but he'd like, you know, Chip Pass mm. and that. He was, Liam Brady was, he was a fantastic player in mean, his prime. Yeah, as well. Although I never got to see him like in the seventies, early eighties, yeah, yeah. when he was, he was playing. So I was but too young. You can but tell he's still I've, at I've it. seen, yeah, I've seen like the, the the footage of him, and he was he was a fantastic player. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think Liam Brady was a, a quality player. Is <coughs> the other part of that question? Franco Farrell. Mm. Well, I didn't know that. As I said, I always thought it was Vic Watson. Mm. And that's the one in the record book. So I looked into that. Right, next one's from Jordan Kavanagh. After the Blackburn game, providing we get through it, who would you want our next three fixtures to be? Uh, what, in the FA Cup? Yeah. I want West Brom. I want, I want a chance to Reading avenge. or West Brom in the quarters. I want a chance to avenge 
last year's one. <laughs> semi finals. Oh, semi finals going to be. I'm trying to think who's going to be left. The team I want to avoid is Tottenham. We'll save that for the final. No, I just want to avoid it. Full stop. <laughs> to, to be fair, they're the only team that this year that we have played that have destroyed us. Mm. And yeah. that's the only one that I want to avoid. I'll say, I, I, I want West Brom again. I want, I want a chance to yeah. put it right yeah. for last year. We can turn year. them over, I think. Um, do you know what? The, the, uh, for the nostalgia, I don't know. Mm. Can you imagine another West Ham Arsenal final? Repeated in 1980. Yeah, yeah. That'd, be, that'd be a good one. Yeah. Right. Philip Demicoli. Who would you like to see as a New England manager in the summer when Roy finally pisses <laughs> off? <laughs> Alan Pardew. Yeah, but Palace ain't been doing great in a minute. But no, he's... he's Alan he, Pardew. He has, um, there's no, there's no one else. Around. There is no one else. Englishman, there's no one else <coughs> for me. It's got to be Do Pardew. you think the next manager's got to be English? Or? I don't think it will be, but I think it, it's Pardew's the man for me. Uh, to, to be honest, I can see it being Wenger. No, he won't. He won't, he won't leave Arsenal. We'll see. He'll, he'll see out his career there. We'll see. But, uh, but I, no, I do think it. I, I, I'd like to see Pardew, but yeah, yeah. But he's, he's saying if you're looking at the, the the current crop of English managers, he's he's probably yeah. the one. Yeah, you, you're looking at players who can galvanise. Yeah, I know, mean, because as soon as he come back to Palace, he just changed it around. Turned, turned yeah. it around. I mean, I know they're on a little a little dip at the minute, yeah. but and he done good things with us, you know. Yeah, we give me one of you know. I said I was. Too young to remember 1980, but give me one of my greatest yeah, days. Exactly. Great, I oh know we didn't win it, but right. 2006, like the, the the performance, the day, the, the fans, just getting, everything. Just, just getting to the final was amazing. Yeah, great it was days great. watching yeah. my stand. Exactly. All right, Derek Daly. Thoughts on Jack Collison having to retire at the age of 27. What oh. memories have you got of him playing for West Ham? I think we covered uh, that in the yeah. last post-match pint. You know, yeah. we, we're quite sad to hear that he's retired. Yeah, he's, um, he's you know. similar to Ashton. Yeah, uh, Ryan was saying, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, you know, and the fact that Crawley cut short by injury yeah. and what what he could have gone on to. That was it. Before he got that shoot. injury, he was looking so good, regular for Wales. Yeah. But you know, I feel I feel for him. I yeah. do feel for him. And. Um, I say like the, the the character of him was, uh, you know, he played the day that his dad, yeah, um, yeah. sadly died, and and then he it, three days later against Millwall, yeah, exactly, he, he played, you know, and to be fair, he played well in both games, yeah, you know, and it obviously is the uh, playoff semi final, mm. you know, scoring yeah. the goal there. Yeah, they they were they were the ones. They're the memories of Jack. Yeah, so yeah. We're, we're sorry. You know, yeah, it's sad Jack, news yeah. that he's um, at to retire. We wish him well whatever he does. Yeah, because he's doing his badges at the minute, so I think he he will make a decent coach. Uh, all right, this one's from James Snedden. <laughs> it's a good one. Dude. I live in Canada and the main sport there is ice hockey which they always win gold in. My question is, West Ham played the Canada national hockey team, who'd win? <laughs> I think Canada would absolutely smash yeah, like Canada, the floor with us. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think most of the time we'd spend on our arse trying to stand up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one from John Hewitt, if you could swap pay it with any other premiership player, who would it be? No one. If I had to swap him for any other premiership player, mm. Sergio Aguero. Mm. I personally wouldn't swap pay it for anyone. No, no, I, I wouldn't, <laughs> but if I had to. <clears throat> Alright, this one's from Brian Saunderson. What game are you looking forward to more, last at the old or first in the new? Cool. Last at the old. Yeah, it's going to be one, one, one last. Yeah, I, I hope we win, but win, lose or draw is going to be an emotional mm. day. And I say that it's not really one that'll always be in the memory. You say looking forward to it. I, I mean, I'm looking forward to the first game in the new stadium. Mm. Um, but say you know, look, looking forward to leaving the bowling. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard because it's going to be that step from. I think the atmosphere will be electric that yeah, day. It's going to be the move forward, isn't it? The last, yeah. the one, and the first at the new. But yeah, for yeah. me, it's the last. Yeah. Right, this one <laughs> from Jack Twig. Would you rather fight hundred cat-sized elephants or one elephant-sized cat? 
<laughs> Mate, I've seen. I've, uh, I've cats are vicious. Man. Yeah, I know. I know. I've, <laughs> I think I've, I'd rather fight 100 cat sized elephants. Yeah. Part of my job, I have to do like animal welfare and stuff mm. like that. And um, <laughs> one of my workmates rescued a cat out of a drain. Mm. And she's rescuing the thing, and the thing tore her to shreds. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd. Um, 100 elephants, please. I mean, it's like my, <laughs> my cat's mental. Like, she'd be laying on you. And you'd, like, you'd be fussing her. Huh? And then she'll just turn around and bite you and run off. What's like, <laughs> wrong with it? <laughs> Vicious things. So, yeah, I'll take the uh, hundreds, 100, 100 cat-sized cat elephants, elephants all day, I think. Yep. Um, one from Mark Holden. We'd definitely like to know what your favourite fa- flavoured crisps are. Cheese and onion. Do you know what I like? You know the, the Brannigans? Mm. Um, they have a mustard flavour. Cheese and onion. Nice. Walker's cheese and onion. Or salt and vinegar. Not. I like salt and vinegar. Uh, one from James Edwards. How are your significant others with your love for West Ham? My missus, I mean, my missus used to, when she was little, she had a, a season ticket with her dad over there. Yeah, my missus, that. my missus, she's an Orient supporter, and she always used to go over the O's. Yeah, it's right. Nice you know, she, she's, a, she's a big football fan, so mm. she, she, um, she's all right with it. Yeah, she's I mean... Good, uh, to be fair, I know a lot of women wouldn't put up with it, so she's, yeah. she's, she's a diamond I mean, my for that. Done, I mean, she, she used to go over there like when she was little with her dad and that, but she doesn't really... I mean, she'll, if, if I've got West Ham on indoors, she'll sit there and oh, sort of half watch it. But. If I've got football on indoors, she goes upstairs and watches <laughs> another telly, mate. <laughs> when football's on, football's the main number one in the house. Yeah, but I, I, only really, I only really get to watch it when West Ham's on. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have to sit through Ollie Oaks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one's from Tony Barnes. Who's the better manager, Lyle or Greenwood? <sighs> Tough one, because it's the, the master and the apprentice, isn't it? Lyle. Yeah. Yeah. Just because it is the master and the apprentice? Yeah. I, I think. And Because um, I, mean, I know Ron Greenwood won a, a European trophy. As well, but John you know, John Lyle, we did get to a European final with John exactly. Lyle. But um, I say for me, John Lyle, because I actually saw John Lyle's teams mm. play, so I'd, I'd say for me personally, Lyle. <clears throat> uh, Brendan Black, in a magical world where the whole squad's fully fit, who would you start up top? Carol and Sacco. Yeah. Or maybe Sacco and Valencia, because you say, I, I know we, we answered about Valencia. Yeah. Carol and Sacco. But he, he, him and Sacco did fire yeah, together. Yeah. But we've never seen Carol and Sacco, or Carol and Valencia. Yeah. If I remember rightly. But I'd go Carol and Sacco. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bradley Flack. Bit of a random one. How do you think the business around Upton Park, such as the Pine Mass shops, survive? Um, I'd say it, um, I'd say a good chunk of their monthly trades probably taken on match days. I think some of them will go. I can't yeah. see them as well. I think the bowling will be all right. I think that'll be okay. Mm. I, I, I think a lot of the other businesses. I think the further suffer. away from the ground yeah. you go, I yeah. think. I think, I think the help. good the good thing for the pubs like the bowling, you know, they're not that far away from a tube station. Mm. So you'll still get people doing their traditional thing again going down yeah. there for a pint, having a wander down, jumping on a tube. And I know the bowling are putting on um, yeah, like, uh, the coach travel coach, and yeah, yeah. cut yeah. price beers. So yeah, yeah. I think they'll be all right, but a few be... others will suffer. Yeah, I, th- I think any, anything sort of back towards East Ham or yeah, up, start up towards dropping. sort of Plasto that way, I think they, they may suffer. <clears throat> uh, this one's from Alex Pendlebury Bow. Who do you reckon would make the best manager out there? Out of our current eleven, I'd say Ginge. I reckon. I'm going Mark Noble. Yeah, Mark Noble. Yeah, I think because uh, um, I know we went to the, the fans from didn't we? Uh, mm. Ginge's doing, Ginge's he's doing, he's doing his, his badges. badges. So, but yeah, I'm going to say Noble. Yeah. I think he's got it about him to yeah. manage. No, I think I'm going to say Ginge. Hmm. I think. Right, this one's from Stacey A. P. Hawkins. What's your views on Zarati saying he only went to West Ham for the money and that they never let him have free play to do what he wanted up front, which he has got as a promise at his new club? Well, I think you're there to do what the manager tells exactly. you to do. Exactly. I can't go into work and just do what I want. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> you know, know, in the day, much as I'd like to. You know. <clears throat> 
right, if you only went to West Ham for the money, why did he try and big it all the thingy when he left about, oh, the fans, you know, mm. he's going to miss the fans and all that? You know, yeah. At the end of the day, he's a player, we pay him to do a job. Mm. He didn't do the job. Yeah. See you later. You know. I say moaning about it, the manager won't let you do this, that, and the other. That's life, unfortunately. Listen, like, if you know, he, listen, if at he work, was, if you he can't do what you want. If he was as good as Payet, <laughs> if he was as good as Morrison, mm. you'd sort of let him do what he wants. But he weren't that good. Yeah, but then even like players like Payet, you know, they, they've got a role within the team. Yeah, Billy probably got, said, yeah, "I want yeah, you to do this." They've got a role within that. the team, but there's there's certain players you can sort of let get away with that bit more. Mm. And Zarate won't one of them. No. He's, uh, be fair, though, I like what the fans done with the Zara. What's that? I've seen the graffiti they put on the outside of Zara shop. <laughs> <laughs> Made it in Zara. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one's from Bill Ledbury. What's been your favourite goal this season? I'd say the. Um, Payet's one against Palace. For me, oh, good goal. for me, the Payet free kick against Bournemouth. Just knowing what <laughs> Collie <laughs> yeah, said to the other defender. The wall, yeah, yeah, that's quality. That was. And he never took the bet. No. He just could have been ten grand Fair up enough, after yeah. that. <clears throat> All right, and last question is from Scotty Tyler Jordan. Where will you be sitting in the Olympic Stadium next year, and are you looking forward to it? <laughs> I'm, I'm actually I'm going on the waiting list I'm on uh, put on the waiting list so I'm just waiting for me me think to come through to as as everyone to and, as Ryan I think has commented and Nicky's commented um, I'm sitting in what they call the posh seats yeah. so I'm, in, I'm in the uh, 66 seats so um, yeah I'm looking forward to it looking forward yeah. to going there yeah, yeah I, I'll say when I get me Appointment to go down and pick the seat. Oh, good luck with that, mate. Good luck know. with that. I'm on the waiting list. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't say how long I'll be waiting. No, but exactly, <laughs> exactly. Two years time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then the tickets will be about grand then. That's it, mate. So That's I'll be it. like, no, I can't go now. That's how much mine is now. Yeah, no, yours will be two grand by then. Mm. Yeah, well, you want to sit in the posh seats, mate? Oh. What do you expect? Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, thanks for coming on, mate. Sorry, mate. Thanks for having me. Some good questions, good tough ones in there. Yeah. I say we'll definitely we'll have look to back do on that. Something. We'll have to do that. Yeah, that we're gonna have to go through about, and do a special. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to take that leaf out of Ryan's book. That's it. That's it. <laughs> we'll do a special with that one. <laughs> but um, right. So if you've got any questions for next week, don't forget to use the hashtag WHFTV social. You can leave them on the comment section of this video uh, on Twitter. And on Facebook, don't forget to follow us on those. Mm -hmm. uh, Twitter at West Ham Fan TV. Yep. Facebook.com forward slash West Ham Fan TV. Yep. Do you want to do the website a bit? www.westhamfan.tv. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Yep. And uh, we'll finish the usual way. Yes, mate. Go on, you Ryan.